It's the Rider Rumblings Podcast with Rob Banstone and Murray McCormick. Hello once more, I'm Leader Post Sports Editor Rob Vanstone, and we're here for the third time this week with our fine football writer, Murray McCormick. We're discussing the uh, 101st Grey Cup game, uh, Saskatchewan versus Hamilton on Sunday on Taylor Field. Um, we're going to get to the nuts and bolts of this matchup, intriguing as it is over the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, lots to talk about. Where do we start? Uh, quarterbacks is always a nice, convenient place. Did you know these two guys at all? Do you have any sort of experience with Henry Burris? Somewhat, somewhat. Of, of the two guys you talked to, who's your favorite? We'll put you on the spot. Peyton Manning. Oh, okay, yeah. Wow. How was that for the diplomatic? I still answer? remember you telling me the story about Hank. I think you first met him driving in your car and <laughs> holding your tape recorder while the, you were driving him back to the stadium. The or? first time I ever interviewed him at length, we'd set up this, uh, this interview, and I was going to meet him at a... Actually, he was going to come over to the Leader Post and do it because we wanted to get some photos of him in the studio. Well, somebody vandalized his, uh, his truck that night, and, or the night before, so he was unable to go anywhere. So we basically, uh, I drove him around town while he ran the errands that he was going to run when he had a vehicle, and he held the tape recorder. I asked him questions while driving. He went to the bank. Uh, it, was, it was a really enjoyable uh, occasion. We, uh, we finished the interview at Advance Auto Glass. Okay. <laughs> we started it in my car, and then we brought him into the studio. And that's the kind of guy uh, Henry Burris is, a really outgoing, fun character, and uh, somebody I think you, you like instantaneously, even if you're chanting Henry on Sunday. Darian Durant's the same type of guy. I remember the first time I interviewed him in, in 2008, which was by then his third year as a, rider, as a rider's quarterback. And just from the start, you realize this guy has it together. Not as flamboyant a personality as Henry Burris, because who is? but a really intelligent, cerebral guy who has something to say. And uh, interesting quarterback matchup just in terms of two people who I think have, have dealt with the ups and downs of life as a quarterback. They both experienced it in this market. Now they're experiencing it with a Grey Cup uh, at, at stake. So uh, just from a personal standpoint, they're interesting takes on Can they on play? That. They can play. Yeah. You know, can, Henry, can, can Hank play in this stage, though? What do you think? Oh, well, he, he did it in 2008. Yeah, he was a Great Cup champion ago, that year. That, that's a long, long Was he MVP that year? He was the MVP that year. Yeah. And, and I, I think uh, uh, he, he's worthy of it. Uh, he's, he's, this is a guy who's going to the Hall of Fame. He's become a top five player in terms of a lot of statistical categories. How so. do you do with the good Hank, bad Hank? And we saw that on Sunday. You know what? There's a lot more good than bad. When you're, when you're 38 years old and you've put up the numbers that Henry Burris has, has, has had and, and you've done the things that he's done in his career, you, you accept that there's going to be some things that aren't necessarily going to go right all the time. You're a Steeler fan. You remember seeing Terry Bradshaw. Yeah. And uh, he'd throw 25 interceptions during remember their Super Tommy Bowl Maddox years. Too. But, uh, <laughs> so you put up with a bad Terry Bradshaw because you've got the good Terry Bradshaw with that gun who's going to hit... Swan and Stallworth. Can he and beat Durant? I don't. The way Durant's playing right now, I think that's it's that's heavily tilted on the field in the Riders' favor. The quarterback right. ratings for Darian Durant's two playoff games this year: the first one was 148, the second one is 141. And when he had the 148, nobody was really talking about his passing because he ran for yeah. 97 yards. So how do you, if you could factor running the football into a quarterback rating? My goodness, that would be <laughs> that'll be about a 200. So he's playing as close to perfect football as you're going to get, and the timing could not be more optimal. Uh, but don't rule out Henry Burris. This is a guy who is who he is, and he's playing at this level and playing in this game for a reason. So I, I love this quarterback matchup. I just think it's uh, it's two guys who are meant for this stage. Let's just jump to another spot, but really isn't that quickly? The Luca Kanji and Chris Milo, you know, basically. Chris Milo got his job, Luke Okanji was yeah, let go. So much changed in that uh, October 2010 game against yeah, Calgary. Uh, Luke Okanji yeah. would still be here. So you kind of look back, you know, here's Chris has got his job and he's made the most, and he's, well, I guess he's the most accurate field goal kicker left in the playoffs. And, he, <laughs> and, and that's an interesting matchup because if it comes down to a close game, look at the various ebbs and flows that have, have taken yeah. place this season with Hamilton's place kicking. Oh. They really haven't been content with that situation all year, yeah. and they've had kicking derbies and, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. The Riders haven't had that uncertainty once the season began. Exactly. Before the season... Yeah. They were wondering if Ricky Schmidt or Brody McKnight or, or, or Chris Milo was going to be kicking field goals for them. Once the season began and Milo had 28 in a row, exactly. that ceased to be a discussion. But the, the, I'm not sure this, the Tiger Cats have the kind of stability they want at place kicker. They're still, they're still wondering. And if it comes down to a close game, 
But Luka conchi has been in Grey Cups exactly. before, and Chris Milo hasn't. So yeah. that might be a saw off as far as the uh, atmosphere. Uh, but nothing has really phased, phased Chris Milo this so year. So based on our little quick mini poll here, we're leaning towards the right as a quarterback, leaning towards the right as a place kicker. How about we jump into running backs? Well, that's a that's a clear one for uh, yeah, isn't clear for the but C J Gable Fun the way to watch. he played against Toronto oh. and uh, Boy, he and he's such a great spin moves and he's a, a he's powerful and some of those runs late in the game against Toronto when it, it looked like he was stopped in the backfielder for yeah. for not enough yardage to get the first down and he managed to get some first downs and move the chains and and and, and exhaust a lot of clock and uh, and he's also a very good weapon in the passing game they've used yeah. a screen pass. To C.J. Gable very well. I'm sure Montreal has seen enough C.J. Exactly, Gable, yeah. and uh, so there's there's a there's a, a tremendous player who uh, kind of but then there's Corey a real Sheets, who says he's the best back in the league. I guess the best back in the league, the last guy standing. He's the last guy well, standing he, right now. He sure had a better game than John he Cornish sure in the most important game of the year. Just was, and you look at 28 carries in that game too, and he scrapes and scrapes. Doesn't have big runs, eh? You don't see him have these massive no. yard, yard, yardage He's eaters. had 41 of 37. Those are his longest gains of the year. Yeah. And, uh, it just, it, and he's, it was, it's fun to see him run the ball to it because I, I like guys who grind it. And I, don't, I think, of course, he would be complimented by being a grinder, but in the best sense of the word, he's a grinder. He finds and finds and finds and then goes. And he's hard to tackle. Like, you look at him, he's a smallish guy. But, boy, the, I know it's from the Stampeders. They're having a tough time bringing him down. So I think if we're tilting fields... Tilts is on the Rough Riders side and the running backs. Coaching, you know, this is talk about storylines earlier on one of our earlier podcasts. We know all about Ken Austin's. Corey Chandler was a DC with uh, Hamilton before he came to the Riders. And I really think he needed that before he became a head coach. He had to go become a defensive coordinator somewhere and run his own job. So he's handled adversity, he's had challenges, handled ups, he's handled incredible lows, and he's got him in the Great Cup game. Ken Austin's done the same. Do you? Which one do you see? Who do you think? Well, Ken Austin's won one before, that's and that's true. and he won the Grey Cup. He won as a coach. Corey Chamberlain was a first-year defensive backs coach with Winnipeg in 2007. So I think you have to give the very small edge to Ken Austin simply because he's done it before. He's won one. Yeah. He's he's got what Corey Chamberlain is trying to get. Uh, last weekend in Calgary, it was an important hurdle for Corey Chamberlain to overcome winning a game in Calgary as a, as a visiting head coach. That had not been done. He got there. Uh, he deserved it. He did a tremendous job preparing his team. But now there's that final uh, hurdle to clear, and that's winning the Grey Cup. And uh, if he does that, uh, I just he's a historic the, person in rider history. The Ken has, I just think the writers have How redundant was that? Oh. Historic person in the annals of Rough Riders lore. That was really good. So it's as good as one of your introductions. Uh, I think Corey has better weapons than the Tiger Cats. So he has better players and better positions. I, you know, there's, I think receiving-wise, the Riders are pretty good. The Islington's a pretty good running back. And Andy Fantu, we know what he can do in space, and we're all, we're all very aware of that. Uh, defensive line, the Riders are better. I think Corey has a better team to work with than Ken Austin does. Now, not saying that, does that give Corey a better chance? And Corey has done more with what he's had. You know what I mean? Do I'm trying to get at that? Do you get credit for the coach in this, or does it Ken Austin all of experience and all of his past success overweigh what Corey's done to get this team where it is now? Well, if you look at what Corey Chamberlain has done with the, with the defense, and granted, Richie Hall is a defensive corner, that should not be discounted. But they finished second in the league in points allowed last year in terms of the, on the good side. They allowed the second fewest in the league. That wasn't enough. Corey Chamberlain has decided we, they've got to remake that defense. That yeah. defense is now first overall in the league. So that's largely a testament to Corey Chamberlain. And they do have that defense on their, on, on their side. And it's incontestably the best defense in the league this year. Can they stop Henry Burris? Can they stop Fantuz, Gable, Ellingson, Bakari Grant? There's a number of weapons there that they're going to have to deal with. But they just finished dealing with the Calgary team that scored the most points in the league this season. So, Like the Riders are going to be favored. I don't expect them. We know that. I, I don't know how they do the favoring. They're good people. Even though Corey kind of Threw out they might be underdogs in this one. Like, oh, no mm, way, no. you're not underdogs. You can find that one, Corey. Good coaching on you if you can, but I don't think they're going to do that. So they're going to have to deal with that overdog being the favorite role, and I think that'll be a, a coaching thing. Now, let's see what Corey can do to handle that. I know we'll be at the game, probably. Yeah, I think, I think that'll be part of my agenda on Sunday I would Sunday think after. we're going to do another podcast to wrap things up. I would think so. I I think if they win this one. Grey Cup, we could be doing podcasts all winter. Okay. So... Uh, We'll, uh, I might have to get a second tie. But uh, 
We will talk to you next week. Who knows what the subject matter will be then. It'll, we do know that it, there will be an extreme emotion involved. Either people will be ecstatic or not want to hear anything else about football, but whatever, we'll get there. For Marie McCormick, I'm Rob Vanstone. Thanks for all your time this week, and we'll talk to you next week about something. I'm sure it'll be interesting. Take care.